Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today. Very special guest of the Nike Hot Seat, Sal Mastriani. Sal, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on here. Congratulations on the new job. Brown head coach Todd Beckerman called me and told me last week that he was indeed hiring you as a new volunteer assistant. How did this all happen? Uh, kind of just, you know, right after the NCAA tournament, um, I ran into Todd and he just asked me uh, if I thought about coaching. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And um, I actually knew Todd a while back when, uh, when I was in high school. He recruited me a little bit when I was um, trying to get me to go to Maryland a little bit. So, you know, we kind of knew each other. So, you know, when he saw me, you know, he came up to me, congratulated him and everything, and then offered me a job. And I was definitely interested in when he stayed in touch from the tournament till when I took the job. Yeah, Todd Beckerman, a real student of the sport, um, not only followed you prior to uh, recruiting you in high school, but through high school and then on to, uh, you know, the plans were at the time to take you and uh, offer you an opportunity to wrestle at Maryland. You instead ended up at Virginia Tech. Um, so Todd would have to be patient in order to be able to work with you. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about your time at Virginia Tech wrestling for Kevin Dresser and the Hokies. That obviously was a very... Uh, a powerful experience for you. You had some great, uh, great wins. Uh, you know, it wasn't a real heavy uh, win-loss record uh, in terms of, uh, you know, just dominating, but the guys you did beat, they knew exactly who they wrestled, Sal. You were outstanding to watch. Uh, there were some injuries. There were some injuries, and how are you now? Oh, uh, well, now I'm definitely 100% healthy, which is nice, you know, especially this past season. Um Staying healthy was really important for me. Talk about your final season with Virginia Tech. At uh, Toward the end, as you approach the ACC uh, championships, uh, there was to be a coaching change. How did you and the team rally around each other and Coach Roby in order to uh, you know, have a great, great showing and then, of course, a look toward the national championships? Yeah, I thought we did a really good job of handling that situation um, with everything happening. Uh, around that time period, especially with the ACC tournament, the national tournament coming up, you know, you have to be extremely selfish and kind of, you know, do what's best for you. And the coaches kind of knew that. So, you know, they, you know, everyone was still focused. The goal was the same. And, you know, we weren't really getting distracted by anything. And you could even see, like, we even had our, like, our little slogan all about us. Cause you know, <clears throat> after every, after, after everything that was happening, that's what it was about. It was just all about us. You know, um, getting ready, trying to win an ACC title and trying to win an, AC, an NCAA championship. You know, everyone just need to worry about themselves, do their job, and, you know, the results will come in. So I thought we handled it very maturely. We're talking with Salvatore Thomas Mastriani. Born August of 1993 in Montclair, New Jersey, he now will make his home in Providence, Rhode Island, where uh, Brown Bears are waiting eagerly for your attendance there to begin work with Todd Beckerman. And you get to work with Tyler Grayson of Central Michigan and Jeff Alexander, uh, also out of the ACC, a former uh, Maryland star. Talk to us about the opportunity, because realistically, this is your first coaching opportunity, but you've been kind of teaching your entire career, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> you know, you learn something the way you learn it and the best way to learn something is also teaching it. So, you know, especially with wrestling, you know, doing camps and stuff growing up, you know, even teaching wrestling for since high school, really. But, um, definitely this is a great opportunity for me starting off. This is a good spot for me to start off as well. My coaching career where, um, a program that has so much potential and, you know, Todd, who's, uh, a good guy, and good coach, you know, learn a lot from him, you know, so I think it's it's a good opportunity. I do. I think it's a great opportunity. Todd talks about your work ethic, uh, the work ethic that you put into all that you do, and he's looking forward to that making an immediate impact on the middleweights. I got to believe you're pretty excited. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I definitely like to get my hands at the middleweights and, um, you know, I never never force a style on anyone, but in terms of effort and work ethic, you know, that's one thing I definitely would preach a lot, you know, because I think that I'm definitely living proof of hard work pays off. 
and you know, especially breaking your opponent and stuff like that, it all comes with working hard in the room and then the results will come on the mat, you know. So definitely try to implement that part of wrestling too, guys. In talking about Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, I don't know if it was your first trip there uh, or if you'd been there before, but what was your first take on the campus itself? I really liked it, um, you know, especially coming from Virginia Tech, who has a really nice campus. Um, there's a little different, but it's a lot like very historical, which was nice to see, you know, like we want in some classrooms. It's really, really historical. A lot of um, a lot of rich history on the campus. And um, it's nice. And it was actually pretty big, like for the, the size of the amount of students that go there. It's a, actually a really big campus, you know, so I really enjoyed it. You mentioned the history, of course, Brown University within the Ivy, highly respected educational opportunities for all the kids that come. And, of course, you've got to have a pretty big GPA uh, in order to be even considered, and that makes it uh, that much more challenging for coaches as far as recruiting goes. Uh, I've got to believe you're going to be part of the recruiting process for a lot of kids, and uh, given the opportunities that, that you earned, uh, I'm sure you're probably pretty excited about that as well. Over your career, Sal, you tallied 12 major decisions, 11 tech balls, and five pins. Um, none of those come without breaking your opponent. You talk about that. Can you can you describe what it means to break your opponent? Yeah, so pretty much to break your opponent is when the match is probably in the first period relatively close. You can be winning by a couple. You can win it by losing. But – the difference between you and your opponent is you up the pace when they either stay the same or lower it. And then that's when you see the results come in. Sometimes it might be the second period or sometimes, you know, it might take a little longer. It could be the last minute of the third period where all of a sudden your guy just has nothing left and you're just taking them down, turning them, taking them down, letting them up, taking them down, letting up. And who knows, you tack them or maybe even pin them where they just completely fall apart and you're still going. That's what it feels like. You always seem like you were getting, um, like you were gaining steam as you went through those matches. You know, I've watched some footage of you over the last couple of days just to remind me what. Uh, and, and a lot of times you can see, even the 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 broadcaster or the uh, the fans can see when you've broken an opponent. Some were very obvious, some not quite so obvious. But perhaps that started at Don Bosco Prep. Is that fair to say? Yeah, definitely fair to say. Don Bosco Prep, well known for developing hammers. <laughs> yeah, not, especially not just, not just the part that hits the nail. I'm talking about the claw end too. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Sal, you're a communications and public relations major. Uh, got your degree there at Virginia Tech. Um, what was your ultimate goal prior, prior to even having this opportunity to coach? Oh, definitely to graduate and um, you know maybe find a job back home in New Jersey, something that I'd love to do. Um, But honestly, I love wrestling, the the sport. So, I mean, when I got the opportunity to coach, it was was a no-brainer for me. With using your public relations background, uh, is there a possibility that you'll start a a Brown Bear blog, or as I call it, the Triple B? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. We'll see. I'll talk to Todd and see what... What maybe I can do to help around with using the public relations degree. I definitely know a good bit about that, though. So (laughs) I think that definitely helps with maybe a little bit of the marketing or anything. I think it would be fun. I think it would be fun in a big way because that's that's the strength not everybody has. Mm -hmm. You know, my degrees are in communication and public relations as well. And, uh, gosh, you're in an area of the country that uh, where it really all started with uh, Dr. Bernays and – and teaching the first class, writing the first book, you know, it all took place uh, in and around Harvard and Cambridge, Mass. We're talking with Sal Mastriani. Uh, He's the uh, new volunteer assistant coach for the Providence, Rhode Island-based Brown Bears. When do you actually start? Uh, So our first camp is in June. Hold on. It is June 25th to the 28th. So definitely, but I'll probably head up there probably maybe a week earlier get everything situated, maybe even a week before that. So I'm ready to go up uh, as soon as possible, actually. But we're actually doing a clinic Wednesday at Bergen Catholic so in New Jersey, which is like 20 minutes from me. So so you're you're actually Sal Jr., aren't you? 
Uh, tech, not really. My dad has a different middle name. I don't know. That's <laughs> my, my parents like get mad about it. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. Sal and Jen, how did they take the news when you called to tell them that you've already got a job? Uh, they were really happy for me, especially, you know, my, like my dad was there when, you know, when I was talking to Todd, um, when Todd first came up to me about the job and he was really excited and my mom, she's definitely happy for me, but she wishes I could, she thinks I'm going to live down the street from her when I'm <laughs> 40 years old. So I don't know. She's not too, she's not happy about how far I'm going to be, but I told her it's closer than where it's only like three hours away where I was seven and a half hours away in Virginia. So it's not too bad. Well, she, she, she wants you down the street. I know that. Yeah. Jen, Jen, a typical town. mom. I gotta love yeah. it. I gotta love it. All right. So three sisters, Martine, Miranda and Madison, where do you place in the, in the, in the quad here? In other words, the four of you, where are you in the lineup? I'm the second oldest. So is, is Martine the oldest? Martine's the oldest. Yep. Okay. And, and I gotta believe they're awfully supportive and pretty proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Very supportive. Oh, definitely. Very cool. I'm, I'm real proud to know that uh, Virginia Tech has produced yet another champion in life, uh, did real well at uh, Virginia Tech, and now you bring that uh, that energy, that that uh, optimism, to Brown as they continue to develop on all that uh, you know Todd has been doing. They've got a top ranked class coming in. What is it, class of uh, 20, 2027, I think. Uh, it's it's an interesting time for Brown. You know, at, where at once they were on the ropes, now they are really roaring. And uh, I like what's going on. The fact that uh, they brought you on board tells me that they are definitely looking toward the future. So I'll thank you very much. Is there anybody you'd like to thank as well? Uh, I just like to thank uh, the fans, everyone that supported me through my you know through my career, and you know, and just keep paying attention. Follow Brown Wrestling, you know, there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of big things coming our way, so. Look for him on Twitter. Look for him on Facebook as well, Brown Bears. Look for him online, brownbears.com, forward slash sports, forward slash wrestling, and you'll be able to stay in touch with them just like us. Sal Mastriani's been our guest, a 2017 NCAA All-American for Virginia Tech and the new volunteer assistant for Brown. Appreciation goes to Todd Beckerman for helping to make this interview possible. Sal, thanks for being in the Nike hot seat today. Thank you. Thanks, Scott.